into a prayer from the depth of your heart fill me up fill me up someone is praying someone is praying let it be from the depth of your heart if your voice pray let it be from the depth of your heart fill me up until I overflow I wanna run over I wanna run over Lift me up till there's an overflow. I want to run over. Father, we pray and ask that you will help us again this second service. We have come as proof that we believe you. We have come as proof that we are open to receive, open to be built, open to be made, open to be established. And we pray that your spirit will walk wonders in our midst, that your word will come with power, bringing conviction, bringing transformation, bringing empowerment. I pray that in this service, whilst the word of God comes, I pray that the sick be healed, let the oppressed be delivered and in the name of jesus i pray that you will lift us in unusual dimensions we give you the glory let jesus be glorified amen and amen give jesus a big hand clap thank you again while still standing i'd like us to honor the angels over this house apostle goodheart and his precious wife pastor mrs bimbo thank you remains an honor to bring the word of the lord amen i think you should appreciate yourselves too i honor you thank you so much please be seated please be seated god bless you let's get to the business of the morning we began in the first service teaching on the law of honor for those of you who were not here please do well to get the cds but just um recap I did teach that honor has to do with discernment the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding of uniqueness I spoke a few things about the kingdom one of which is that the kingdom is built upon the law of seed time and harvest and I said how that listening is the seed for learning that honor is the seed for access that every closed door can be traced to dishonor and that most of our limitations in life are reflections of our inability to appropriately communicate honor honor to god honor to men and honor to principles are we still together we spoke a bit on dishonor refers to trivializing value trivializing uniqueness and I showed us from scripture how that um, scattered to scriptures, uh, stories of people, families, nations that communicated dishonor and the grave consequences that came upon them. And um, it's important that we understand that honor is a master key. It truly is one of those keys that is responsible for the mysterious lifting of men and the remaining of men i told you that if a door ever opened once and is now shut the diagnosis is that dishonor closed it praise the name of the lord but the bible declares that there is hope for a tree even if it be cut down that at the scent of water it can bud it can sprout again may that be our testimony this morning in the name of jesus very quickly in continuation i like to teach on the principles now the principles of honor having understood that our lives and our success in this kingdom is highly honor dependent please do not forget this honor 
will require a lot of adaptation honor will require a lot of um, meekness and humility because many times honor will sting your ego it will even attempt to downplay on your pedigree but the excellency of a life that chooses the path of honor cannot be compared let me tell you if you if you abide by these truths you're listening to you will need a telescope to look back and see where you are coming from because of the dimension of speed the dimension of grace that you will suddenly begin to experience in your life hallelujah praise the name of the lord so there are principles in in administering honor so that doors be open so that our destinies advance honor is very important because um this is a world of men you have to understand this the bible says the heaven of heavens is the lord's but the earth hath he given to the sons of men and so this earth is honor it operates by the ministry of men and you may have heard me say it but i will repeat it again for emphasis that in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters doesn't matter how many people hate you how many people have reservations about you that's all right opinions are the cheapest commodities on earth but who likes you matters a king hates a woman and all of a sudden she's out of the palace a king loves a villager called hadassah and she becomes queen for god so loved the world the moment we became the object of his jealousy he invested his time his blood his attention to see that we became redeemed love is powerful honor is powerful are we together right so principles a few principles to help us number one the first the first um key that we need to learn as far as communicating honor is concerned the first key required is discernment you have to discern discern people discern places discern graces discern atmospheres you cannot be be you cannot be able to effectively communicate honor without discernment you will have to learn to discern who am i talking to who am i talking with it was lack of discernment in genesis 28 that cost jacob an opportunity to effectively maximize his encounter his regret was that he did not discern the place he discerned god but he did not discern the place he woke up and the bible says he said surely the lord is in this place and i knew not he was standing at the corridors of heaven seeing angels ascending and descending but he did not maximize it when you go to chapter 32 he had learned his lesson having paid an enormous price in the house of Laban for over two decades the punishment for not encountering God properly now in chapter 32 he was wiser so when God came he said I would not let him. I made that mistake I would not repeat it again until his name and his destiny changed are we together so we need discernment we need to understand that god please listen to me men are carriers of spiritual realities men are carriers of spiritual possibilities territories are carriers of spiritual possibilities now um I leave us to scripture because sometimes you see when you teach issues like this people can um, when people are not spiritual the 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 body of Christ and the church is not just a lecture hall the realm of our communication is beyond intellect are we together and so some of the things that we communicate would require spiritual discernment because when you look at it from a scientific plane or from a sociological plane it doesn't add up but this is why we compare spiritual things with spiritual hallelujah territories till date
have spiritual investments in them geography teaches us that there are all places are not the same is that true there are places you go to and they tell you there's oil here there are places you go to they tell you there's gold remember the realm of the spirit birthed the physical realm and that the physical realm is only a reflection it would be unwise to believe every physical territory is the same it would be unwise to believe every human being is the same god stores his treasure not just in heaven but in men so when you pray and say lord lift me he answers you not just by sending the holy ghost he answers you not just by sending an anointing he answers you by bringing a man so you have to search what is man here's how i put it what is in man that you are mindful of nor the son of man that thou visitest him there are so many treasures in men that if we will discern and tap into through honor among other ways would rise as though the devil does not exist are we together now so we need a lot of discernment why because i already shared in the first service that there is a weakness in men the weakness is the propensity to be familiar with anything that is excessively available somehow we seem to work well with scarcity the moment scarcity has a way of waking us up scarcity of fuel scarcity of kerosene scarcity of help scarcity of money the moment there's scarcity it seems to give us a sense of decorum we wake up and then we're able to hold of it um there's a very unintelligent childish concept loitering around the body of christ the concept that trivializes men in a bit to show our honor to god it's a very sincere concept but it's very destructive to mean we don't need any man forget about man god you're the only one we love have you forgotten that in the beginning god yet he still needed men are we together he's been there right from the beginning and in the beginning but he still saw the need for men and he's committed this side of his kingdom to men it is this faulty theological narrative that has punished many many people we love god we hate men and so we keep growing spiritually while we suffer on earth we are punished again and again and you see the laws of life are very patient teachers they will recycle themselves for as long as it will take for us to learn remember we did say in the first service that time does not change anything time only reveals it takes decisions to bring change are we blessed discernment number two we need wisdom we're discussing a few principles now to be able to effectively administer honor you will need wisdom wisdom that translates into diplomacy wisdom that translates into adaptation you need wisdom you cannot effectively communicate honor without wisdom number three you want to effectively administer honor you need forbearance now this is a very powerful one because in a very strange way god's treasures are stored in earthen vessels and it's a known fact that there are no perfect men in fact the quest for perfection as blamelessness and faultlessness is exhausting and unnecessary replace perfection with sincerity are we, to, are we together now yes elijah was a temperous man moses was an angry man your jesus entered a temple with a whip he didn't report to the scribes and the pharisees like a very civilized citizen of a nation should do jesus the jesus you love and so worship took a whip and began to flog people that's why the disciples were confused don't blame them this guy would teach on one side teach on love and then he's whipping people again and the disciples became confused who are you somehow you act like elijah when you weep 
then you act like someone else when you love then you act like a prophet who are you it was a very necessary question because of all the dimensions they saw are we together you need forbearance somehow we have this this wrong expectation just because a man is a ceo a pastor uh, maybe a bishop some spiritual leader or a father a mother we expect blamelessness faultlessness perfection are we together as the basis for communicating honor if that is what you search for the only person you will find that qualification on is jesus the exalted christ not even the one who walked on the earth the one who is seated on the throne there are many 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 people today who would not honor their parents why they would tell you my father was not a responsible man my mother was not a responsible person this and that and that my lecturer is not this nigeria is a scattered country they will say um and then we we bring that 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 pain to the church and begin to have unrealistic expectations on men of god i remember years ago someone saw me eating and he exclaimed as though i was it was a sin he said apostle you are eating i said you see the kind of thing this these are the kinds of teachings that we must manage and i submit to you that most of these teachings came from us men of god in a bid in a bid to create that that um that sense of holiness and to preserve the purity and the power of the anointing we we derived a lot of pride in making people feel that we are not human and Jesus wept very powerful scripture and God rested very powerful scripture and Jesus was unhungered very powerful scripture these scriptures were kept in the Bible for a reason are we together now there are four faces when you read the revelation daniel ezekiel all of them when they were caught up to the throne room they saw four faces there's no time to teach on this the first face is the face of a lion represents dominion and power but if all you have and if that is the only dimension you have there is trouble these faces are the progressions of all that we need to be to attain the full stature in Christ the face of a lion dominion power but if all you have is authority and power pride will kill you so the next face becomes the balance of the former one the face of a calf it lets you know that the purpose of power is for service are we together now the face of a calf and then there is a side effect to servanthood to people would take you for a ride they would destroy you they will wake you up by two o'clock and blackmail you emotionally and say i thought you said god sent you to us and in a bit to show that you are a sincere servant they can take you to your grave early so the next face becomes the balance the face of a man god reminds you that even though you are empowered you are human so that you are not ashamed of your humanity the side effect of being human is that you can reduce yourself to be so carnal that you will give in cheaply to the flesh you will give in cheaply to natural things and not be able to exhibit that godlike character then the last phase becomes the balance the face of the flying eagle that although you are human you are also divine if all of these dimensions are not captured in your christian experience there will be a great imbalance if all you are is a lion you are in trouble pride will destroy you if all you are is a calf men will take you for a ride until they kill you if all you are is a man that's satan's domain he will eat you up because his strength is walking in the flesh and you cannot be an eagle just for nothing it has to be the holy spirit did not just hover around alone he came upon Jesus. He came upon the apostles. He came upon men. Are we together? You need forbearance. Patience. 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 Do you know what it took for Elijah to receive the mantle of Elijah? For disturbing Elijah, fire would come on you. Are you aware of that? That Elijah was strict. You disturbed his time of worship. He won't teach you and say, okay, take it easy. 
um, next time when you come you don't have to fight i'm a human being i'm sensible no the fire will teach you a lesson then you will go back and teach others yet elisha walked with such a man don't blame the sons of the prophet for their anger i'm sure they were already getting angry what a vicious wicked lecturer we don't know why the god of the hebrews would be using such a man isn't it amazing that while you are angry god still loves the person you hate this is the strange thing about god now you be god almighty god you know be my no you know now you be God Almighty God You're not a man Listen So you can look at your father You can look at your mother Be so embarrassed being associated with them And yet they remain your parents forever the idea of disowning people is just a mental issue there's no such thing as that there is, that that's a it's just a way of expressing pain and disappointment there's no such thing as disowning anyone connected by blood lord why did you give me such a father why did you give me such a mother and god says because of where i'm taking you to you need to learn how to forbear there are many of us today it's amazing that you are thanking god for passing through what you prayed that you will come out in a hurry for if you did not go through that school will you not be able to manage the grace the anointing the influence why did you give me such a pastor and god says because i know your tendencies i know what you can do i know what you cannot do and so i planted you so that you are built you are established you need a lot of forbearance let me tell you the difference between forbearance and forgiveness <laughs> forbearance is a spiritual and a psychological state where you are prepared to see that act that mistake that weakness repeat indefinitely so your mind is already prepared to accommodate it there is a difference if I step on your toes by mistake, that's a mistake. If I say sorry, you forgive me. But if you know I'm going to do it a thousand times, you need to switch from forgiveness to forbearance. That means it's no longer new. Are we together? Yes. If you cannot forbear, anything that has to do with relationships will fail in your hands. You will need forbearance more than forgiveness. A woman once told me, said, Apostle, you need to pray for my husband. I said, why? He said, he scatters clothes everywhere in the house. I said, Madam, this is more than an issue of forgiveness. You need forbearance. Could it be that this is why God brought you? He said, that's the point. I fix the house. He comes back and in 10 minutes, the house, I said, Madam, this is the excellency of being a woman. If it was like you, what would be your ministry? And the woman felt disappointed. She felt sad. Apostle, this can't be you. I mean, I expect you to say, forbearance forbearance god why did you just send me all of a sudden you would have prepared me and said next year i'm going to ask you to go god says stand up now go to abuja tomorrow go to lagos tomorrow go to london tomorrow <laughs> do you forgive him you have to create that accommodation because he will do it again i assure you Take this seed and come and give your pastor. Do you think that's the last time you will do it? We're talking God here. Forbearance. Many of us do not have the quality of forbearance. That's why little things offend us. We are very offended. We are very pained. We have piles of unnecessary names on our books. Angry, blaming people. Black book, book blue book. You know, book of this and that and that. And then we get angry. The lifespan of our joy is at least two weeks with any relationship. That's a very dangerous way of living. You must cultivate forbearance. Someone say forbearance. If you do not have the quality of forbearance, you will not be able to communicate honor.
now very quickly how do you show honor ways of expressing honor number one to express honor to a man to a people to a nation to a territory let's focus on a man i wish i can talk just about your pastor for a case study number one have deep respect for the person and the office of that man of god or that individual in this case your pastor let me zoom it to apostle goodhart for instance since i'm talking to Rogic, and by extension the body of christ you cannot say you have honor and you show honor without having a deep respect for the person and the office many people have respect for the office but they do not have respect for the person have you seen such a thing they respect the boss the office of the boss but they do not respect the individual you truly have to show respect to the individual as a person and then the office very very important number two celebrate him or her openly and sincerely i'm showing you ways of communicating honor celebrate him or her openly and sincerely sincerely is the key word here it's very easy to celebrate openly but sincerely have you seen people who told you thank you wow you're a wonderful person and then as soon as you shut the door not by word of knowledge there is an atmosphere that comes out from the same room and you know that everything that was done was just a state managed activity sincerity is powerful it gives credence to everything you're doing celebrate him or her openly and sincerely number three you must still buttressing on point two you must genuinely celebrate those you honor it is impossible to claim you honor god you honor laws you honor men without celebrating them number three you must contribute to improving his or her life you cannot be one who is communicating honor without actively contributing if you want to show a man a government an individual the kingdom god honor you have to be a contributor that's why service is a very powerful indication of honor service let them do it lord may your name be lifted high it's a very powerful song but there has to be someone who makes that happen i have profound respect and reverence for people who serve god i have profound respect and reverence for people who serve in any platform and more importantly those who serve me people who serve god and serve me as touching the assignment i have profound regard for them because service is costly are we together there are people who are never contributors let me tell you this ensure that in your lifetime you become part of the history the story of many people this is one way to remain transgenerationally relevant you be part of the story of people let someone be able to say while i was rising or as i rose you were part of the story don't come out of nowhere and expect a stake in someone's life when you did not make any investment our world is full of angry people today who claim that you know me you were my brother you were my sister it's a shame that you are now the senator it's a shame that you are now apostle it's a shame that you are now wealthy and you will not even look down on me no if you were not there when i was on the cross don't expect to be invited when i sit on the throne one of the easiest way to succeed in our world is find someone building something great and be part of that vision contribution to service there are people today who gave people 50 naira that 50 naira has become an estate today are we, is that correct let people remember you joseph served the wine presser in the prison and even after two years of delay god gave the king a dream and the man said i remember my wrong what wrong 
the wrong of not honoring a man who blessed me the king could not sleep that night because Mordecai had showed him honor by participating in his success and he ignored Mordecai you must be a contributor never find yourself in any place any platform especially such a great house as this and not be an active contributor an active participant do not just be a recipient you have to be a participant it was on the strength of service i communicated my honor to the great veteran of faith now of blessed memory reinhard bonke to receive certain graces from his life there was a crusade and people were there to receive several men of god who had gone there with hunger fasting to receive i knew that honor is the key to access there were hundreds maybe tens of thousands quite honestly of people on that ground and after the first day i became dissatisfied i knew i needed to do something I went from 3 a.m. I was at that crusade ground. I saw them wheeling people on wheelchairs. I saw them bringing in people, crutches, trying to prepare the people. I said, please, can I be part of this? They said, no, 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 no. There's a committee that has been trained. I said, you don't know where I'm coming from. Committee or no committee. I must walk on this crusade ground. And so eventually they found out they couldn't do anything with me and about me and they just allowed me while i was willing some of the people i was praying in the spirit i said lord this is how it will also happen in my meetings i'm showing honor for a man who has found this grace behind every glory there is a story there truly is a story service i remember many years ago i used to play the keyboard for a man he was part of he was a, a a man of god but then he had a prison ministry they were part of a team that had once gone to preach for basanjo when he was in prison never did anyone tell me thank you the only thing i remember getting was one bottle of fanta and one cassette i would carry my own keyboard and trek from home with joy like a madman to that place do you have a track record of service he says gather unto me my saints psalm 50 and verse 5 they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice you shall serve the lord your god and he shall bless that's the covenant make sure that you are a participant those who serve are not those who come to church those who serve are those who make the kingdom come through their service we call it service when we come to church but in truth it is those who are active participants when you downsize a company for those of you who have the privilege of leading great organizations there are people who no matter how many people you are downsizing you will not downsize them why because they have shown the extent of their commitment and their participation you must contribute to the improvement of his life a kind advice for many of us who are trusting god in various ways and at different levels to rise do not seek things when you meet the great your point of contact is their need you must find their need and that becomes your entrance point into their lives this african mentality of of latching on to people who are blessed or wealthy or influential or have keys or gatekeepers captains of industry from the standpoint of need or standpoint of tribalism it will only recycle pain in our lives every man's need is your point of contact to him so when you want God's attention don't shout and say God give me an attention you find out where his heart is go there hallelujah one of my one of my is, is one of the people that god is helping me raise he lives with me works with me back then when i was in zaria and he's still there till now by god's grace he's, he's almost done today with school and he came as a little boy one of the things that he did was he came and started sweeping he started sweeping my house every morning he would come he would just sweep i would say, who are these boys drive them away they would not go 
and he would come to just sweep and one day i looked at him and i said no let's give this person a chance to be great his dad died and then my neighbors told me that when his father was alive he, he did the same thing to them and i said now here's an opportunity today this boy i think he's a, he should be a graduate now his life completely changed he literally lives with me no blood connection whatsoever every man's need i repeat is his point of contact there are many people who you never get a text message from until there is a need so you have some artificial greetings greetings calvary greetings in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ um it's been a while since i spoke with you uncle and the man is waiting for the other side of the text because he knows he's coming just to let you know sir that um in two months my rent and just as god has used you you, see, you, you don't there is there is nobody who will love you passionately and invest their time their energy to that kind of life just to let you know that i've been praying for you sir i've seen your schedules i know that you're busy should you want me to help you achieve anything to help you do anything i'm readily available now that's an intelligent way to get access is why many family members never receive from those who are blessed because they always come with an entitlement mentality you are my uncle you are my auntie you are my pastor you are my tribesman you must bless me some threaten you with prayer i prayed for you to get there you know all, all sorts of things i apologize i hope i'm not wasting your time but this is very powerful every man's need is his point of contact a few weeks ago i i sat at table with um, president buhari's photographer and i was listening to the young man i just wanted to hear him talk to me i said how did you become you're not a muslim you're not from the north how did this happen when this gentleman narrated his story i said you truly deserve to be where you are the president would not take any snapshots he would not do anything if that gentleman is not there in fact i was told that he's one of the few people that can actually play with the president like play oh no honor honor there's nobody nobody that that gentleman does not have access to when you are the president's worker slash friend slash playmate that's more than a governor more than because they all come and he's there he's the one who snaps them most of the people who turn others down are not even the employees they are the gate men the, have you seen people like that they watch you and they say no problem you do all you are coming or oh, god loves me can you let him know i'm around he says that's all right you sit down there for two three four five hours because a human being you despised decided to punish you not god though you keep having dreams and visions of the open door but a man you dishonor stops you every great man's need i repeat is his point of contact you want the lord to continue to use the grace upon apostle goodheart and his wife to bless you don't just sit down and say what sermon am i coming to receive today you are my pastor no be discerning for instance lord how can i make their lives better how can what can i do that will make them more efficient for some of you god will give you an instruction and say be a personal intercessor for them that's it there may be a prayer department that prays but god will say you there are things i will reveal to you that no one will see let that be your project to pray are we together now yes for someone god will tell you you say make sure that apostle and his wife never have to think where will i get fuel from make their work easy these are various ways these are not gimmicks sincerely let me tell you i've had the privilege by the grace of god and i say this with all humility 
God has connected me to so many people cutting across several industries and the point of contact is always me intending to give almost never to receive in fact let me tell you sincerely it was until recently my greatest weakness in my life is receiving it would take a lot for me to receive things when i started ministry i never knew there was something called honorarium that you actually can preach and they give you apple banana and say thank you i couldn't believe it when you become obsessed with giving the world will look for you nobel prize is not given to receivers give us contributors take this mentality not just for those above you your contemporaries and even those under you be a giver make sure when you meet people you're not the one stretching your hands what can you do for me i'm not just talking in terms of finances i'm passionate about giving every time i see people i'm thinking what can i do if i can offer prayer why not if i can offer an advice why not plant yourself the lives of people and you will watch yourself rise are we there so you contribute to improving the life of that individual next point how do you express honor pray for the person you truly honor consistently prayer is powerful you can never have enough people praying for you anyone who truly honors you under god should pray for you and anyone you truly honor under god you must invest a portion of your prayer life praying for them in this instance pray for apostle goodheart sincerely pray for his wife pray for the family pray for the church pray for everyone you don't have to be part of the prayer department and you don't have to be known i have i have a list of people churches men and women of god mission agencies except i do not pray i pray for all of them i have the map of this this city i have the map of nigeria i have the map of africa i have the map of the world many times i'm praying and the lord will instruct that i lay my hands and just begin to speak in this kingdom we gain by losing when you forget about yourself and you focus on others soon the world will see your selflessness they will see the purity and the sincerity of your intention and they will come in numbers you cannot imagine to invest in your life hallelujah you must pray for them it's difficult to criticize who you truly pray for it's difficult to find fault on and with who you truly truly pray for most people criticize every they criticize the body of christ they criticize pastors they criticize their ceos businessmen politicians because they do not pray for them i am telling you you tried try spending an hour praying for someone then immediately after try to criticize the person and see how difficult it is criticism is proof of prayerlessness that the people do not pray and if you don't pray for others it means you don't even pray at all because if you are truly a person of prayer you should be so yielded he was speaking to those in the church in Thessalonica and he said, brethren, that you pray for us. It was a request. Paul was a man who had met Jesus Christ. And yet he still needed the prayers of the saints. Let me tell you this. Please look up. I have learned through history, through scripture, through mentorship, and now by experience, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Can I tell you this? trust god for grace 
to love and admire everybody who is in a position of prominence from any angle and pray for them you do not know the attacks if you are elijah jezebel is coming if you are daniel the gods of the pers the patients and the medis they are coming after you if you are jesus the scribes the pharisees and everyone is coming many have no idea on the attack that an average man of god has it doesn't matter whether you have results or not only god will tell the number of people who take our names to shrines every day only god knows the number of poisons i've taken in my lifetime is until we meet with jesus christ my phone is full of prophecies from prophets and people f this is not today it started years ago apostle be careful you are i was praying and i saw your name in the shrine I said what do i do did i take it there it's already there what what do we do i just <laughs> you'll be surprised your name is there too oh you don't don't look at me and feel bad for me our names are all there provided what do you think listen 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 yes sir the moment you aspire to rise to your highest level in destiny that becomes your offense for as long as you do not have a child that's all right the day you give birth to twins something is wrong with your shirt something is wrong with your trouser something is wrong with the way you talk there is a side effect greatness comes with such a cost when god takes you patiently thank him he's helping you to get used to battles because for every level i tell you sincerely there are devils is god speaking to us this morning lord why is it that the moment i became a ceo where are all these attacks coming from the people who used to love me before they didn't love you they love your level they were your level was a comfort to their mediocrity and every time you stretch further let me tell you this among the many things that true success does is it kills excuses from mediocres now people can ask a question that they can't answer you gave excuse that in nigeria people do not rise you gave excuse that are there but someone is building and we, this person used to come to your house and beg before what then becomes your excuse are we blessed next time you see your boss don't stand to say this man that man no next time you see a politician next time you see apostle goodhart and his wife stand here what you are looking at is a testament of endurance battles you may never know it's easy to talk it's easy to criticize let me speak with a bias for men of god many people do you know that there are times i'm minding my business after strenuous weeks of ministration i just want to rest suddenly i now start having visions of someone's trouble and sometimes you hate the fact that your eyes have been opened in the realm of the spirit because now you don't you provided you've seen it you can't claim you are not aware oh god open my eyes it has an implication because the moment you want to rest here he comes the spirit of grace moving from house to house who can intercede to save this man and god says you are my trusted one i know you are tired but can i come to you again at a point in my life i became so exhausted i would travel let me tell you this sincerely i would put my head in the aircraft and only just wake up when it lands because of how tired I am I'm trying to meet a conference and while that is happening everybody is happy apostle is coming and I'm just looking at them sometimes when I'm dressing I look at myself in the mirror and say wow why why did you become apostle <laughs> Joshua Selman
and many times i would promise that as soon as the service is over i'm not seeing anybody i'm tired and their compassion betrays me again the moment i look at them i remember him and i remember myself and i remember what he did on the cross suddenly that energy returns again and sometimes i'm talking and people say apostle we're seeing a, what they call this thing when you don't sleep we're seeing it and i told them i said you don't know what is my spirit that is standing and preaching there but this other man is as tired as anything and the moment that happens here comes church members with all due respect why didn't you wait to see me i called you to come to my house why didn't you come and whilst you're tired you're saying lord can you raise people who understand what it means to carry this cross i was told a story years ago that a man of god was so frustrated his congregation frustrated him and he had a vision and he went to heaven and he was complaining i don't know if it was just a fiction to to explain something or it was true and he was complaining to the lord and saying lord you carried a big cross and put it on my head this is too much i'm, I'm sick and tired i don't want to commit suicide and then that the lord took room and the room had several crosses some small some big and he said you go and carry the one you want yourself and he quickly went and picked a small one and the lord said but that's exactly the one you have you just picked what you had and then the man stood there and said so who are those carrying this one he said they are on air too. they laugh they smile but that's what is on their head do you know that ministers also have problems some of them have family problems some of them have problems with their children some of them have problems with relatives some of them whilst they are preaching there is an obituary text that is coming you just lost your loved one and yet they have to compose themselves the ethics of ministry demands that you put the people before you do you think such people are deserving of honor sometimes you you finish walking by four and you run away you you see your boss still in the office by 12 hello sir where are you are you home no, I'm still here. I'm just trying to tidy up something. And you call him by six. Where are you? I had to quickly catch a flight. I'm on my way to London. Sir, do you rest at all? Well, God is faithful. And then you say they don't do anything and they just make money for nothing. And God is hearing you. And you wonder why prosperity runs away from you. Truly, let me tell you, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. The average man of God in Africa, the average man of God in Nigeria, many people have no idea of the spiritual sacrifices. I preach an average of three to four sermons every week. And it's not what you want, it's the topic you are given. Do you know that when the anointing rests upon you whilst you are ministering, I'm going to be praying for you shortly. Do you know that it has a physical effect on your body? Medical people will tell you. So the higher your anointing, there is a real effect. It's why very anointed people, except they create a medical system around their life, they don't live very long. They don't know why. It's not just an attack from Satan. Believe what I tell you. while they are in the room alone crying under medication Benny Hinn was almost collapsing one time he wanted to go for a crusade and he found out that he just fell and his doctors came and said what is wrong with you and they checked him they said sorry you can't go for that crusade he said souls my heart will not let me rest I need people need to be saved please listen to me the spirit of dishonor is a dangerous spirit when Jesus hung upon that cross you laid aside your majesty you gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created do you know historically human beings are experts at persecuting their saviors so if you are a savior 
be ready for dishonor of all sorts in your lifetime are we together look what jesus went through on the cross a 33 year old man hanging naked i hope you know he was hung naked all the coverings around him in movies is just for social reasons he was hung naked the lamb of god and yet you tell someone about it and he looks and says so what did i ask him to die for me was anything wrong with me he left heaven it's like being a professor and because you are a professor alone you throw away that title you start from kindergarten but this time around not alone until you become a professor again something you already wear you threw it because you were alone and you had to pick other people so that while you get the phd all of them also have that phd too that's what jesus did he had no need he had no lack but he was alone and he said no i'd rather go to hell for you than to remain in heaven without you and yet you preach that glorious gospel and people trivialize it it's painful to go through so much and then deliver what you brought and people look at it and trivialize it that's why spiritual things don't come on just everybody god discerns people who have honor and value hallelujah one time i was traveling to i can't remember where and i was seated in the in the plane and quite honestly when i looked around almost everybody around me was by far older than me and then i was sleeping you know this kind of sleep that you're nodding you're like this left right and center and someone tapped me and said you're a young man what are you doing that gets you this tired to be sleeping and then um i said no no this is an elderly man i can't be foolish we we're taught to respect but i said oh dear oh dear this man of god that stands here and smiles and preaches and prays and whilst you are sleeping he's awake with the wife praying for you crying for you there are many breakthroughs you can't remember praying for but they happened i tell you where they came from they came from the altar that drips with blood consistently this is not some church gimmick please listen to what i'm telling you many of the men and the women of god who stand upon this altar and bless you they have come on account of the sacrifice of relationships you must be a contributor you must acknowledge when i was in seminary my principal then in the seminary he was one of the people who truly gave me the foundation for godliness structural foundation he had lived in the u.s for many years and so when he came he brought in that culture and most of the the he concretized moral excellence excellence in general taught us so many things that were out of the curriculum for our training and a few years ago i was burdened in my heart and i told my dad he was my dad's classmate coincidentally and i said please can you help me let's go to that man and my dad drove me i went down to joss and when i went to him i was happy to see him now he was quite significantly elderly and i greeted him i got down on my knees and he said apostle i said don't call me apostle sir i am still your boy i'm still your son and he said you don't know how proud of you i am watching you and seeing what you're doing all over the world and i said sir i brought this gift to tell you god remains god but if you were not there i believe that a significant part of my life would not be the way it is and i told my father to escort me because i wanted you to know that i am grateful and if you will permit me there is something i want to be doing for you and for the rest of your life till your eyes see the king for as long as i'm alive you will not beg for bread again the price for your welfare you paid it in me and now that i am made 
please find rest because I'm alive. That's what I did for him. I went back feeling fulfilled. I remember when God called me to ministry, when I gathered my parents, I watched my dad and my mom as I knelt down and they laid hands on me and spoke over my life. It was a risk being the first son of the family. And recently I had the opportunity to honor them. One of my goals in my lifetime is that the world will stand and clap for my parents. And the day that happened, tears came out of my eyes. I said, finally, one of my life's goal is done. Who can rejoice because you are alive? Who can call you a person of consolation? Please listen, we have 10 minutes and we're done. There are people who are called sons of consolations, burden bearers. There are people who, a man of God, a businessman, every great man will tell you. That's why when people are going passing on to glory, some of them leave their wills, not for their children. Sadly, because the children are not sons of consolation, they can find this supposed house help who had been there for 20 years, 30 years. There was a man in this city who became very sick years ago he was transported out of this city flown to india or someplace and there were rumors that he had died and some of the workers cleared the company they emptied everything the stationaries because rumor came that that man it looked like he had died yes he was paralyzed but he was still alive and there were only two of the people who were left when that man returned back on a wheelchair, he entered into his own company. He started crying physically and the doctors had to manage him so he would not die. He said, these were people I invested in. I took some of them without interview. I gave some of them double salaries. Some of them came to me and they pleaded with me. Do you know the pain that many leaders, many men of God go through all across this nation? Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Your pastor stands here to invest Jesus, to invest the word, to invest life. A few times that we have the opportunity to speak, I am amazed that there are few times we really talk about ourselves. He's not talking about himself. Great things that the Lord is doing. The last time I came during your conference, when I was done, I had the joy to go to your structure, the building. I was amazed when I saw the master plan. Him and the woman of God, I could see the passion in their heart. While I was praying, I said, my God, these people don't even think about themselves. As I saw your worship team leading worship and jumping, I said, look these people. Some of them are family people. Only God knows the inconvenience that they had to go through to make sure they serve Jesus. Hear me. Are you aware of the inconvenience that people go through to see that you grow spiritually? Not just the set man, but even those who are connected to the ministry. Is it fair and is it honest that your CEO, your man of God, your woman of God, your boss in the office. Even during the recession, the company did not plunge down. You may not know the negotiations and the sacrifices, the diplomacy and everything that need to go on behind the scene or needed to go on behind the scene to keep that company standing. I dare you to write down the list of five or ten people who are most significant in your life and make up your mind that this week coming you are going to plant a seed of honor not money necessarily but honor to them i challenge you this is not a discussion i've had with your pastor i challenge you don't wait for a pastor's appreciation day or some special event you see when you come through for people during special events it's natural there's nothing unusual about it that you come as a person and as a family and you meet the woman of God and say, Ma, we always laugh, we always jump around, but I want you to know that you are a major contribution to the health of my life, my family, my spiritual life, and I just want you to know that I am truly grateful. 
you have a seed to back up what you're doing you see you can buy someone a car and yet it is not honor honor is not just in money or materials is the sincerity of your heart you see when you tell somebody thank you the assignment of thank you is to make sure that the person recognizes your depth he perceives the depth of your gratitude so it is your assignment to use all the skills you can employ to ensure you cannot stop giving thanks until the person who helped you has come to a point of comprehension if i give you one thousand naira and you say thank you i give you ten thousand naira you say thank you i give you um hundred thousand you say thank you i give you one million you say thank you you've not worked in wisdom it was not the same sacrifice that brought those levels of gifts so your assignment is to employ every skill within your power to ensure that i recognize how deeply grateful you are it may require kneeling down it may require multiple text messages it may require saying thank you many times the assignment is not to verbalize thanks the assignment is to study my mind to see that you must burn it in my mind that i am grateful and for such people let me tell you every time you effectively communicate thanks you create a debt that must be paid back to you it is true growing up we used to gather as a family to pray and we really hated it as children because when is my dad's turn and my mom to pray oh dear if my mom begins to pray here lord is it not the other day i was going out by the road was it left or right i can't remember she's praying when a car was about to come if it was not your message would we i mean and then she'll continue praying father thank you father thank you and we're there wondering and saying oh god please help my, my prayer to you is help my mother round up <laughs> and then my dad comes with his own he may not be as detailed but i tell you he can spend five minutes just saying thank you how childish we were we didn't recognize the things ah, for the things you have done and the battles you have won only you are worthy of my praise i magnify your name for the things you have done and the battles you have won only you are worthy of my praise Your honor stands to God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And then the significant vessels. There are husbands here that need to truly honor their wives. You may not know the sacrifices that madame does every day with joy. You just return back and there's food. Don't say I paid her dowry. There are many women who need to appreciate their husbands. Don't complain and say, look at this man. He's bought two cars. I may be a young man, but I've been a man all my life. I assure you, it's not easy being a man. A lady gave birth this morning, and when they sent me the photos, and I saw the baby, I said, Lord Jesus, thank you that I'm a man. I don't, I'm not sure that I have the grace. Just from the photo, I'm, I'm not sure that I desire, Bible says, covet earnestly, not, not that one. And yet, sir, with all due respect, Madame gave you two children, three children, four children, five children. It's not a big deal. Remember the danger of familiarity. There are young people here. Now you are doing well and you leave your parents. You see some of these are old folks still doing what they were doing while they were young. Mama is still carrying wood in the village and the man is here giving donations to churches. I'm not against it. But make sure that in all your lifting, you do not forget those who helped you. There are many people who do not take care of their families. But sometimes you come to us as men of God and you bless us with millions whereas the family members are suffering. It ought not to be so. 
we're rounding up we'll apologize after the service but i need to burn this are we together now yes sir there are homes that the moment you see special plates you know visitors are coming they kill chicken and it's the head and the legs that the children eat. You see them standing somewhere around the kitchen as beggars in their own homes. While visitors that will betray you tomorrow, they come and they have the choice meals. I'm planting in you a seed of honor. Beware of neglecting what is close to you. The greatest gifts in your lives are the ones around you. Your father, your mother, anything you cannot pay for is God's gift to you. Don't allow your children hate you because of how you dishonor them. They go out of the house and they are treated as kings. They return back home and they are treated as rubbish. Same thing with parents. There are many young people. Parents remain in the office because their children, they, let me tell you, there is nobody who runs away from an atmosphere of honor. There are many men today who cannot go home. Christians, as soon as they enter their homes, dishonor speaks everywhere there are churches that dishonor their pastors dishonor their men of God I do not know any assembly where the man of God will not excel knowing that his people love him sincerely not something you qualified for apostle good heart thank you for being my pastor i love you that you can truly he knows how comforting it will be you can be serving in the church doing things but your heart is sincerely not there we are talking of a genuine connection let me therefore propose a few things to you as I attempt to round up number one you must make a covenant with yourself and your life and your destiny that for as long as you are planted in this assembly under God make it a point of duty that you will stand and you will die with your pastor make it a point of duty that you will see to it that as he follows Christ you are giving him the best of your support and everything extend that same mentality to your boss extend that same mentality to your children can i tell you this there are many young people today who hate their parents because the parents never believed in them they went elsewhere your father is not the person who gave birth to you your father is the person who believed in you believed in you enough to invest maybe this is a word that god is giving a few parents be careful the words you use on your children the way you tear them down someday the sun will go down and the little boy today who is helpless will come to a position where you may be ashamed to lay claims everybody's destiny is divided into the morning stage the afternoon stage the evening stage and the night stage he says so then teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom this is a key that has changed my life i'm honored today to be part of the life this is why i'm sent to the body of christ you do not know what joy it gives me do you know aside from being a man of god my greatest personal legacy as a human being is to be one who lived his life loving the lord and sincerely being a shoulder for many people aside being a man of god The meaning of my name is the way to love and it's a very powerful name i blessed my parents a thousand times for being that discerning to give me such a name i sincerely love people i don't use people i don't try to no return to the place of genuine honor return to the place of genuine honor honor to god there are some of us i know now i want to say something in one minute and then we're done there are many of us here who even though we are a congregation the truth is i want to tell you an uncomfortable truth from a sociological standpoint 
from a spiritual standpoint even though this is logic and by extension whatever church listening and following and the body of Christ I want to bring you to a sincere realization that you are not all the same that is the honest truth from a standpoint of sacrifice from a standpoint of achievement you are not all the same and there must be a system I'm not trying to teach stratification yes we are all equal before God but if that statement is not balanced it will lead to a lot of dishonor I found out that the reason why many blessed and wealthy people do not come to church is that there is a track record of dishonor their sacrifices are trivialized in the name of creating a unified platform to bless people Jesus did not hide his honor for noble people Zacchaeus come down I've changed I'm going to your house and because of that one sacrifice many people were forgiven the centurion you are a man under authority i respect you i don't need to come to your house i will speak the word no matter how high god leaves me i'm wise enough to know that there are positions i occupy today sociologically speaking that is a privilege it didn't come by age it didn't come by qualification and we must be wise enough to communicate the same is God helping us so there are many of us that God will bring us into places where from a physical standpoint we should not be there don't abuse that access when God gives you access to the ears the hearts the hands of kings and nobles do not trivialize it one time I was going to pray for a, a first-class traditional ruler in this nation and when I got there there are these people I don't know what they call them the ones who hold whip and ensure compliance those guys there and I was going to enter the palace and you don't enter the palace with your shoes you know that right but the man said no he said enter and the people were surprised I said no 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 sir please let me take off my shoes he said no I am king I said enter but if I'm going to see him another day and I now buckle my shoes and just jump in no I will not abuse that access can I tell you this every time a man shows you uncommon access make sure you send back a message that makes him know I recognize this is a privilege and I do not take it for granted I guarantee you do that and you have secured his fear that fear of if I give you greater access would you abuse it if you let them know that you are aware that you will never abuse it then you will see more of them these are the keys of the kingdom that we do business with I've received calls today that I will tell you sincerely even at this level God has helped me God has honored me but there are calls I've seen that I had to say whoa okay something happened recently that really shook me one of the prominent global families global families on earth I'm sitting and suddenly I get a call I'm a lawyer to ABC family they have demanded that we should fly you to come and help settle something in the family and I said okay this is serious I'm not sure I have a visa to that nation and they laughed they said do you know who is talking to you visa to where ah I said well we've been taught to be obedient citizens you have to get your visa so they don't embarrass you <laughs> oh dear I pray for you in the name of Jesus who is the helper of men the doors that have been closed in your life as a result of dishonor in the name that is above all names here at this exalted altar we declare those doors open now we declare those doors open now in the name of Jesus now listen to me we are going to pray and I'm going to give you one or two minutes by the grace of God please passionately pray first you're going to ask for mercy for communicating dishonor dishonor to God dishonor to men dishonor to principles many of us as I'm speaking to you now God is bringing to mind the reason why certain groups just alienated you why certain individuals you communicated dishonor by speaking wrongly about people and they later heard what you said and on account of that they closed certain doors lift your voice and pray for mercy Roger, are we praying body of Christ lift your voice and let's pray 
father in the name of jesus we obtain mercy we are praying it's time for doors to be opened again it's time for doors to be opened blessings on ending it's time for us to step into realms of prepared blessings through understanding it says by knowledge shall the just be delivered go ahead and pray shali pras kadabos shinahasa shkala bradanda saprakato sekete brendekete balahasya mercy oh god for the doors that I have shut knowingly and unknowingly, I have severed valuable relationships through dishonor. Relationships that would have been ladders for me today. I would have been ten times better, you may say. Cry for mercy. Hallelujah. Second prayer point. You are going to pray sincerely that God will grant you the grace to unashamedly communicate honor. It takes a lot of revelation and maturity to communicate honor because communicating honor can be ego stinging, especially when you communicate honor to people who may not seem like they are deserving of it. Sometimes you may communicate honor and they may not reciprocate it. If someone is sowing nonsense in his own garden, you shouldn't be so angry that you change what you are sowing in your own garden. You will reap what you sowed, not what your neighbor sowed. If you honor a person and it dishonors you back, don't worry. The Bible says you will reap what you sowed, not where you sowed it. Are you ready to pray? You are going to cry to the God of heaven. Grace to practice honor as a principle. Grace to practice honor. Please lift your voice. Please in the church in my department grace to practice honor in my family lift your voice and pray shalika pranda gata basoda balahashia skade baruziata lord the grace the grace to practice honor as a lifestyle honor in business honor in business honor in ministry honor in career honor in relationships honor in family hallelujah now i want you to do something very prophetic you are going to pray as a point of contact the apostle over this assembly apostle goodheart and his dear wife you notice i always talk about him and his wife if you honor a man alone you are not sincere are we together now yes it is always christ and the church not christ alone you honor christ you hate the church his jealousy will still fight you because jealousy is the rage of a man if you truly know that apostle goodheart and his dear wife have been shepherds laboring praying i want you to sow a seed of prayer right now you're going to pray in one minute and passionately pray as you would pray for yourself lord lift them lord keep them come on Roger. is this how much you love your pastors is this how much you love your shepherds lift your voice and pray pray from the depth of your heart uneasy lies the head that wears the crown Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Lord, may this honor towards these vessels never be found in my life, through my words, through my body language. I make a covenant with God that I will make ministry easy for them. Are you praying? I make a covenant with God that I will support them. I will stand by them. I will invest into their lives to see that as they exalt Jesus, as they feed me, that they are not stranded, that they are not frustrated, that they are not suicidal. In the name of Jesus, I will ensure that they are healthy, whatever it is within my power, to see to it that Christ remain lifted and honored and glorified in Roger. I become an active contributor, an active participant. Please 
pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I apologize, but I want to give you just one instruction in righteousness or two. Please listen. Hold on, guys. We're wrapping up. This is a very serious business. I cannot begin to tell you the things I've seen just standing here preaching. We're not doing that and my time is up. We have to honor the time. But there are two things I want to tell you. Honestly speaking, in Christ and by humility, if you keep these things, your life, it will not, some of you, it will not take weeks. Number one, I want you to please write down the names of 10 people the Spirit will minister to you who are deserving of honor in your life when you go back it could be you and your wife it could be you and your children it could be you as an individual that you want to show these people honor whether by sending a text by a seed whatever it is that you have to do for them please you do this in the name of the lord and watch what happens remember it's one thing to desire to do a thing but it's another thing to be instructed to do a thing there is always an unction even if some of you even if some of those people are people you know who may not easily like you maybe rivals in business maybe someone you know who has been the reason why your company don't worry just do what i'm asking you to do honor is powerful that's what killed her man a woman used honor as a sword displaced another woman killed her man and secured the entire 127 provinces sometimes the battle does not need swords honor is a vicious weapon it can fight are we together number two now this is something that is from my heart and now it will be unfair if we do not do this i want to encourage everyone inside those following Forgive me, Apostle Goodhart. I know he might be watching and, and um, Pastor Mrs. Bimbo, forgive me. But let me say this. I want everyone under God, go back to God and think of something, a seed of honor that you are going to sow into the life of Apostle Goodhart and his wife. If you don't know what I'm saying, that's all right. Please. It will be hypocrisy to come and sow a seed into my life and bless me when you have not done so to your pastor let me tell you sincerely not many people will be this honest to tell you are we together now yes yes listen to this some of you right now as i'm talking to you god is speaking to you please listen some are following online some are workers and the lord is speaking to you I'm not going to make any calls to say come out necessarily no but there are men and women that God is speaking to you and saying look what this man has done you called him in your down times he prayed with you you confided in him he honored you you opened up several things they are the reason why some homes are still remaining today they are the reasons why some people are still moving forward ministers are like doctors when you stand before a doctor you don't say i'm an adult if it's time for injection you turn and receive the injection quietly are we together and sometimes they can perform surgery so there's no secret with doctors that's that's the way it is with ministers open up your wounds and they bandage everything you must make up your mind that seeds of dishonor through words seeds of this don't let anybody come and sow wrong seeds for instance no no be bold be matured and be determined enough that i will never allow myself to be a partaker of evil this is a very powerful principle are we together you are going to agree with god agree with your wife agree with your husband please I want you to do this if you love God you honor me and you honor Jesus I want you to do this 
that God according to I know that this is a ministry with very blessed people I'm not talking of giving for church project I'm not talking of giving into Roger ministry I'm not talking of giving into no I'm talking of your pastor and his wife if God can grant you grace and they can give you audience it's not just transferring money or sending this is oh no it's not just about that to let them know the least anyone can do here is to send a sincere text message is that true apostle goodhart pastor mrs bimbo thank you i listened to apostle's message and i'm truly convicted i just sat down and thought through your kindness the last 13 years the last 20 years the last five years the last six months thank you i cried the other day and your hands were there to wipe my tears i just want you to know that i'm sincerely grateful never send somebody a text and say many people have blessed me just to let you know you are one of them that's a very demonic text message there is there is nothing special in that kind of text message don't do that you know that's the text people that's why the people don't call you back many people have blessed me just to let you know you are one of them no you have to give people a sense of exclusivity it's a secret father i stand in partnership with the grace upon the set man and his wife i thank you for this beautiful congregation made up of veterans in business and career in ministry lord i acknowledge on his behalf i stand here representing apostle goodhart and his wife to let you know that truly they honor you listen to me i'm not praying we're about to pray some of you in this church are very wealthy people it's no secret some of you in this church are very influential people some of you in this church are captains of industry some of you are people with uncommon achievements for some of you it's a big sacrifice every time you come here let me stand on behalf of god's servant and his wife to tell you that it's not only him that you honor i can tell you this apostle goodhart truly honors you and recognizes your sacrifice your seeds your place it's important for you to know this and that if for any reason anybody has communicated dishonor of any sort i am telling you this now that it was never intended so are we together now many times i talk to my people they know that i love them i let them know lavishly let me challenge all the heads of units and departments here extend this show of honor to the people in your department whoever heads the worship team make sure that you let the people know that on behalf of apostle goodhart we honor you and we thank you don't take for granted that people leave their homes and come for rehearsal don't take for granted that people show up every other time when you let people know you sincerely honor them the gift is that they will give more of themselves to you and so i'm standing as representing the man of god and his wife Rogic. in the name of jesus christ i join my faith with apostle goodhart and his wife to tell you that as servants of the living god you are greatly honored you are greatly treasured and you are sincerely appreciated do you believe what i said yes so do not be in doubt and never think for once that your pedigree is being demeaned or downplayed no on your own part please do me this favor even though he's away do your best if you have his contact if you do not find a way of letting the woman of god and the man of god know that you sincerely and you celebrate them and at a workforce level all of the people who head units those in those departments find ways to make your leaders know too you appreciate them because at their level they are paying prices you may never know some of them have to settle quarrel with their wives because they are coming home late make sure you let them know are we in agreement on this the lord bless you the lord honor you in the name that is above all names 
I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Lord will increase you. I've been told that I have a minute or two to quickly make an altar call. Thank you. Thank you for that privilege. Now, please keep standing. I believe with all my heart that there is no service ordained by God where there is not at least one person who should be saved. If it is God, he always adds as many as should be saved. So I believe that scattered in this congregation, inside, outside, those following online, I believe that there are people who truly need to make Jesus Lord of their life. Remember, the first dimension of honor is to God, to Jesus himself. Hallelujah. And then there are others who may be saying, Apostle, I love Jesus Christ, but in recent times my life has gone haywire and I truly need to return back. If you belong to any of these categories, please, I'll just give you a few seconds. We're out of time. I'd like you to gallantly and boldly leave your seat and just come stand here. I want to have the honor and the privilege of leading you to Jesus. Please, let's celebrate them as they come. Don't be afraid. Don't wait for the first person to come. Be that one person who comes. Be that one person who comes. Is there someone like that? You're rededicating your life. You're giving your life to Jesus. God bless you. I know someone is coming. There has to be someone coming. Rogic, is this the best you can do? Be it unto me According to your word Keep coming According to your promises I can stand secure Will you come upon my heart? The truth that sets me free According to your word, O oh Lord Those who are following online, I'd like you to follow on with the prayer. Those of you standing, thank you so much for making this decision. It's a noble decision, the noblest decision any man can make. Jesus is able to give us a new beginning. I'd like you to lift your right hand if you can. And I want you to passionately say this from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. This is a prayer that leads to your salvation. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Those online, please follow on. Lord Jesus, I love you. And I believe that you are the Son of God. This morning, I have heard your word. And I have decided to honor you by giving you my life in exchange for yours. I declare that from today, you are my Lord I declare that from today you are my Savior you are my King I receive eternal life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life in Jesus name keep your hands lifted father we thank you for this one's the Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise despise. Father, you have brought them by your spirit. Thank you for the gift of courage that you have given them to come. I commend you all to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you be built. I pray that you be established. I declare over you that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of Satan is broken over your life. From today, you enjoy the peace of God. You enjoy newness of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please look at me, those in front. Thank you very much. I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands, all of you, in concert. They'll have a word with you, and then you will be back. God bless you. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you, and the Lord increase you. I declare that this week beginning for you is a week of signs and wonders. I agree and I speak over your life that everything that has caused your door to close in the name of Jesus let it be open there will be testimonies here next week of the fruits of honor in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare that you will experience the grace the glory and the goodness of God in unusual dimensions the Lord bless you the Lord keep you in Jesus name thank you very much and God bless you